I'll do the recap this time since it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, so uh, you all uh, left Brandonsford. I have it now the 18th day that you've been in the evening lands. Uh, so this is dizzyingly it's different for me. My other big OSR game has one for one time. So I don't track like the different time, different passage of time in the game world. Um, but this one does not have one for one time. So it's only been 18 days. Actually. Could I just say before you get too far, I can't do the mapping tonight. My thing is upstairs and, and I'm just, just too much going on. So if somebody else wants to take up that, I want to let, let you know that. Good point. Uh, early on or i mean good good thing to bring up um last uh, time we pretty much just went south until we hit the road and then we started seeing the communities of uh the habitated parts here so it's not too complicated yeah. but so um yeah if one of you one of you all wants to draw uh for you know in case if you end up leaving griff's bluff we'll see what happens but anyways um you, uh, you all, uh, 18 days ago, you stepped through a portal from Perinval, uh, the city of Perinval, uh, where your one last friendly contact, you've basically, uh, not entirely your all's fault, but you had, all the bridges had basically been burned in Perinval, um, uh, some of which was not your fault at all. Uh, uh, some um, nemeses that you had gained, uh, particular, particularly been, uh, one of the counselors um, had thrown out the last remaining demi-human from the, the council of Perinval and, uh, and arrested her just as you all escaped. And you made it through this portal with the hopes of finding a solution because uh, Galby Mudbelt is the last person, the last uh, Mudbelt dwarf. Uh, and dwarves have a magic to them that connects them to stone. And her people have disappeared. She's the last one that she knows of. Now, you've encountered several dwarves since you've been here. Um, but there is this... Uh, the, the, they, um, they have talked about a dwarven kingdom uh, that something happened to it centuries ago. And uh, anyways, when you went through the portal, there was a little halfling there. And all these goblins out in the woods in the night. And he... Uh, secreted you uh, through the, the wilderness for several days until you came to the Hobbit Shire of Brandonsford. And uh, you spent the next uh, two weeks in Brandonsford um, uh, trying to gather information and trying to finally wake up the hobbits to the fact that there was a real threat of a goblin army and a dragon. And you lured the dragon, you gained the, the fabled sword of Sir Brandon. Uh, which is like a plus three magic sword against uh, against chaotic and evil things. And um, you lured the dragon into the goblin castle, uh, destroying the entire goblin army, but also luring it back to Brandonsford, where you fought it uh, in, in mortal combat to its death and destroyed a dragon. Um, and uh, that is where uh, Helmer... Of Helmer from Western L, where's that? Eh, it's not a big deal. Uh, Helmer <laughs> from Western L uh, uh, finds you, um, and he is a, a young knight errant uh, who agrees to join you on your quest to find the fate of the dwarves and now to help Brandonsford, whose wall has been ruined the wall that has sequestered it from the outside and protected it for nearly a thousand years. And uh, the dwarves that trade with Brandonsford no longer come and offer trade. Uh, and Tharnlin is one of those dwarves from uh, Karn Buldar. And so you've been trying to find a, a trade solution as well. So now you, and you also have with you Knob Boulder Hill, who was the former Thane uh, of the Commonwealth of Hobbits uh, of the Evening Lands, and Squints. Um, and uh, so. You have this charge to find a way to help Brandonsford find the fate of the dwarves and you head northwest and there's goblins everywhere and uh, a griffin um, and the griffin kills your one poor sad mule uh, that had survived everything up to that point and carries it off and then the goblins nearly kill you and there's all sorts of weird creatures and you meet a enclave of rangers that are trying to guard the lands against something to the north. And you make the decision that, like, 
this probably isn't paying off for what you're trying to accomplish, so you do a 180 and the rangers help you make it back into civilized lands. Which was a incredibly successful journey. Because uh, you made it down to uh, the road and the riverlands into the uh, what's called the hinterland, uh, where Griff's Bluff is, and you made it into the city gates of Griff's Bluff, where you stayed at the Lone Watchman Inn last night. And um, that's where you are today. Um, if it's cheaper to eat at an inn, um, but you can't if you carry things with you, they spoil. It only costs a few silver pieces to eat. Um, but I think it was included for a gold piece, uh, the room and your food for the night and the morning. So. Yeah. All right. I've got the spinning clock on my screen. It says game pause, by the way. Yeah. Oh, finally. It's gone now. Um, so, you're here at the... Actually, let me put you in a tavern for now, because that's where you are. Um, it's weird. So, you're here at the uh, the Lone Watchman Inn. The uh, um, the Lone Watchman Inn on the first floor is a um, a rugged tavern. It's about uh, 40 feet across and about 20 feet um, left to right, with a, a stone, uh, a cozy stone. Um, actually, it's interesting. This this picture. I, I didn't do this on purpose, but it looks a lot like this picture, really, <laughs> really well. The only difference is. So it has this um, uh, it has this cozy fireplace, and then it has a setup of like a couple of wooden uh, or a, a square um, rugged wooden tables, and about three more uh, circular tables. And you've got these two rooms, which one of them is probably like the buttery and kitchen, and then an, you know another room uh, that's closed and you can't see. But then right here, there's actually stairs, probably on the back side of that beam. In fact, um, and um, it smells constantly, and it smelled like this all night, of apple pie um, and uh, cheap and not very good beer. But cheap. It was a, it was a good okay. smell, and then it was a little... Uh, <laughs> Okay. Now, I have a question. How fancy... Like, I'm wearing chainmail, a little thing. And, uh... Is it looking alright? Well, perhaps not, but if I recall correctly, you actually have a fancy suit that you had made. Um, so, that's an option. That's true. How crazy would would it be to wear that here, though? Like, uh, would it just be like, you know, is it is it for hobbits, you know, or is it is it like? Oh right, no, no. I think it it looks appropriate. It's not like you look like some kind of mismatch of eras. Although <laughs> I find that hilarious. Like maybe you look like an early 18th century and a late 19th century mind, uh, like, place or something. Hosen or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. <laughs> the you, mental image. I, these are fancy clothes, so it would change your class status, your sumptuary kind of like your placement in society. If you wore these things, uh, then some people won't interact with you, and some people will. Well, I would, uh, I would imagine the same would be true of uh, Mitchell Chain. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I, I, that's the that's the question, but. Um, I'll also ahead, say your you, mithril chain is like Bilbo's and you can or Frodo's and you can just wear it under your fancy outfit if you wanted. Oh, okay. Well that's good. What were you saying, Steve? 
Oh, the uh, mental image I have of the clothes are like the ones from Chivalry, Shivering, uh, Shivering Isles. Right. It was absurdly... Uh, oh, yeah. sort of Baroque. Uh, yeah. Like Baroque uh, uh, French finery. Yeah. Everyone with ruffles and like like a Spanish <laughs> Spanish Holy Roman it's Emperor. Like collars and... Yeah. You, um... Uh, you see, uh, the the people here are mostly wayfarers. No one else has business uh, just past sunrise to be in an inn, except uh, drunkers, ne'er do wear, ne'er do wells, and wayfarers, um, and then those conducting business. Uh, so most people in here look like commoners. There are two things of note that you see in the tavern this morning. One is that um, you see. Um, Uh, you see a woman uh, who is totally not that type of character, uh, the, like a you know, like uh, hooded, you know, and uh, like wearing cloak and hood, and has her boots up on the on the stool, and is peering at you across from the tavern. Um, uh, it's not hard to see that she's appraising and kind of spying on you all. Uh, the other thing of note that you see is uh, the innkeeper, Feldark, who you met last night. Um, and you see him behind the bar, just around the corner of the buttery. And he, you see him with a young man, and he hits the young man upside the head and is like yelling and fussing at him. Ratbite will give a wink to the lady if he sees her. He's like, acknowledging, like, I see that you're looking at us. He's like... Gives her a, a, a nod of like, hello there, kind of from across the room. She uh, so. drinks a little bit of her nasty, uh, weak ale and uh, nods slightly. Continues watching you all. Oh. Well, no, go ahead. I uh, know, I, I had nothing. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I lean in. in to you all and say uh, I had hoped to achieve an audience with whoever's in charge here today but I don't want to, all of our activities watched so I was, that's I guess what I was what is our plan were we still thinking of uh, my from what I recall we were thinking maybe of calling on the goodwill of the religious folk at Griff's Bluff to follow the call of the light and help out those poor hobbits in Brandonsburg with establishing trade or something? Was that kind of... That's part of it, yes, yes, yes. Anything we can do to do that. Yeah. But we're, but we're also, we also have the title, you and I anyway, of Alderman. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as such, we're empowered to, I think we can announce ourselves as such and Dig ourselves up a bit and uh, try go and try to talk to who, the biggest person we can find. Well, if nothing else, they have much better beer there, and they they are fine. Uh, innkeeper here should import some beer from fancy yes. Hobbit. I mean, it's Hobbit beer made by maybe or maybe not to advertise world. the Fey part or yeah, you know, the, the secret around ingredient. the religious people. I don't know, but no, they can keep the secret. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's good. good beer. It's good stuff. Um, uh, so there's more than one opportunity then, actually, what you're saying. And actually, you maybe... Can save us. Let me order another beer. Well, you know, I don't know if you were being serious, but I'm taking it seriously. Why not go have a talk to Feldark real quick and, and see? I think I'll do that, actually. Maybe you go have a talk to our friend over there. Ask her why she's so curious. All right. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll do one and then the other. Let's yeah, talk to her like, first. Okay. So if, if you want to talk to the, I mean, I'm good either way. I, I don't mind talking to the lady and or the bartender either one. Uh, I'll grab my my cheap beer and head towards her. Okay. You, you come along. You come along too. <laughs> Yeah, he was just, just going to sit there and be like, well, okay, yeah, yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 by all means. Uh, he gets up and kind of... <laughs> the morning constitutional. 
Nob yeah. uh, and Tharnlin agree with Squints to just stay at the table. You don't know what to do with these big people. Uh, okay, so uh, the woman, um, she uh, she keeps her boots up as, and just like continues to glare at you as you approach. And she says, uh, she says, "Good morning." Morning. I should uh, describe these people um, because they all have a similar appearance. They all have a um, uh, a kind of sandy, uh, dark, mottled skin, and they're all fairly short and uh, thin compared to, for example, Edward um, and probably Ben, um, just judging from the picture. Um, and they all have dark hair and dark eyes. Uh, and uh, Helmer, you would also look like... You probably wouldn't have the 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 Nordic North European hair, but otherwise I think the portrait works. Um, and everybody in here kind of has that appearance. What do you say to her? Well, um, is there a, a, a uh, I guess, is there a chair to to pull out if not too forward? And she has her like boots right in next it. To her. Oh, she's got her boots in it. Yeah. I'll kind of walk up like. So, you seem to be fellow travelers new to the area? I don't know, or maybe not. You're, we're new around here, I assume you figured that much out. Um, couldn't help but notice you were eyeing us, uh, eyeing us over. Oh, you look like a group that could use the services of Vindland the Grand Thief. Oh, we already have a Grand Thief, but that, that's very... Uh, that, that's nice of you, I guess. What's what's Vinland services? What, what what's so grand about this guy? Or are you Vinland? Uh, girl. Oh, okay, so you're talking about yourself is what I, is what I was trying to clarify. I didn't know if Vinland is that a is it, I wouldn't know if that's a masculine or a feminine name. I guess. I um, I pulled off one of the the great heists in the Bray Mill Wood. Um, somewhat famous. Um, I don't know if you could afford my price. Well, like I said, I'm not saying we're in the market for a thief. I think we're, uh, I mean, or uh, whatever you may, your services may be. I mean, who? I'll look over to Helmer's like, you know, it's not that hard to rob from woods. She <laughs> says, she just says, okay. And she keeps drinking her, her ale. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is that all? You just thought that you were eyeing a business opportunity? Yeah, I thought so. I saw that you come came into town and uh, looked like you had some weapons on you. Looked like you were uh, carrying some heavy packs. Looked like maybe you had some business. Uh, you know, it's hard to get things done here without a swift blade. Oh, lots of people need stabbing around here. Seems like seems like a nice place. I don't know. They try to make it look that way. Okay. Well, any advice for fellow travelers other than to hire a grand thief? Hmm. Have you ever fought a goblin before? <laughs> <laughs> Once or twice. Uh, goblins, yeah, yeah. Didn't know it happened. In fact, uh, well, I mean... Our days are defined by goblins. Yes. So, <laughs> goblins, oh, goblins... In the morning, kings, goblins at night, uh, goblins in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Goblins that worship griffins, all sorts of goblins. Goblins pushing carts. Yeah. Well, you'll need to probably... Treat the goblins you find here in town with a little bit more politeness than you might out in the wood and on the road. Well, we never attack first. Oh, and there are goblins in town? Well, that's mighty, mighty civilized of them. Yeah. Used to know some civilized goblins. Been a long time. Yeah. But you'll still want to watch your back. Well, Indeed. it goes without saying, I mean... 
good advice for any place. Ah. The people here are good people. This is a nice town, but it has a lot of problems. I'll be here for the next couple of days if you change your mind. Well, if you need to find yourself in need of the services of a master thief, you know where to find us. Go back to my table. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, I will. I will walk over to. Uh, what'd you say his name was again? Feldark. Feldark. Uh, he uh, comes back up to the bar. He's muttering, oh, "That idiot son." Oh, and he comes up to the back to the bar, and he's like, oh, "Good morning. How can I help you?" Problems, Feldark. Goblins. Problems. Ah, yes. <laughs> Well, um, uh, yeah, uh, my son came back into town. It's, uh, uh, family reunions. They're difficult. And, uh, I take it from me, you don't want to head to Rebic. The place is a, a slum and a, just a, a cesspool of, of thievery and brigands. Well, we actually had planned to avoid it, so... That's that's a wise thing to do. He picks up a book and he says, So, uh, say, uh... <clears throat> uh... Uh... Did, did you hear about the fire at the circus? No. Apparently, it was intense! Ha <laughs> ha! Ha! Ah, he made the joke. Um, <laughs> he, looks at your, he looks at your reaction he writes it down he's like oh god and he mutters uh, so listen and I lean in conspiratorially and sort of beckon for him to lean in close so I don't have to speak loud he leans in I couldn't help but notice that the quality of your ale is well did it has there been problems recently Oof. Um, what's your charisma score? I have a plus one. Okay. Uh, he, he says, The quality of my ale is poor. Oh. Oh. First, uh... Ah. People make fun of my jokes. They make fun of my my, my paintings. They... Uh, they... My, my son disrespects me, and now uh, the strangers come into town and they disrespect my ale? Well, no, I mean, I just, it's, it's serviceable, and it's good after a long day's march. But it could be better. <laughs> oh. Sorry to be, I'll have another, though. It's not going to stop me from drinking it. No, 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 I still, yes. Um, but. Oof. I'll say you can make a charisma attribute check. Um, uh, alright. I gotta find the dice. Where'd the... Where'd the dice go? Oh, right. Yeah, they, they were they were set up on the other one. This one, they're not. <laughs> Do I have to... Do a... Oh yeah, no, they're not in the. I'm not as savvy with it as a uh, sc skooma bag. Okay. Sorry. Well, one second. All right. <laughs> yeah, the tactile dice are fine, or you can type right. it in chat. Or well, I rolled a seven. Ah, okay, so that passes. Uh, he. Uh... I got it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I got it. My my three year old won't stay in bed, so I, I <laughs> I'm sorry. I will. That's all be right. right back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, we'll pan back to, to you, to you all, uh, and what you're doing. So you just talk to the, uh, to the su supposed master thief, Vindlin, um, and, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, uh, I suppose I could, um, head... Oh, Each of you uh, can where, gather where? a rumor. You can also just chat with people and talk to them about the goings on and learn things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you. Uh, ooh. I need. Uh, 
Sorry, what were you going to say, Steve? Uh, I was going to try to figure out um, where to go to make an appointment with whoever part of the uh, uh, the Church of the Thrice Blessed. Um, uh, let me see if I have... Just a, 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 a pilgrimage site to uh, uh, Brandonsford. Ah, okay. Let me see if I have it. Uh, if not, doesn't matter. It's okay. But, um, yeah, no. Okay, so um, <clears throat> they'll point you to it. Uh, no problem. They'll say, uh, 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 let's see. Um, you'll, uh, to get to the Church of the Thrice Blessed, you'll need to... You'll need to head out of the uh, outside of the the walls of Griff's Bluff down the Pilgrim Road a ways. You can't miss it because you'll smell the pigs. I returned. All right. Hey, follow, uh, follow the smells of pigs. Yeah, just uh, just head out east from uh, out the Pilgrim Road, uh, just as if you were going to make the pilgrimage yourself out to the the Broken Dragon Shrine, and uh, eventually you'll. You'll smell pigs along the road, and there you'll have it, the Church of the Thrice Blessed. It's nothing fancy like what they have in Rebic. Ah, Rebic. Mm. Ah, mm. not Rebic. They do the same. <laughs> yeah, they... uh, I bring them. Uh, I bring them ales. Okay, thank yeah, they're they're two men, you. in fact, uh, and uh, they they say, uh, ah, thank you so much. What what are your names? I am Helmer. Uh, this is my friend uh, Ben, or uh, Ratbite Ben, uh, or Ratbite. Um, over you here call is me. Sir Edward. Ah, uh, and uh, these, oh, uh, hobbits and dwarves. Ah, yes, uh, he introduces, uh, what was, was it, was it Th Thelm, Thelm, Thelmer? What was the uh, dwarf's name? Tharnland. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, he, does, he doesn't remember, so ah, this is my friend, uh, Thelmer. Uh, <laughs> Tharnland. Tharnland grumbles. That's what I said. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, and uh, my my uh, fine hobbit friends from uh, Purple Ways. Oh. Brandon's <laughs> uh, uh, I'm. Uh, my name is Tavian, and this is Antonio. Uh, we, uh, we're shepherds. I. How's the shepherd Stuart. business? You, you've got a turn flock in town. Are you close to town, or are you just coming in for turn for business? Uh, it's not good. We had uh, stayed out all night uh, guarding the sh the flock. It's it's exhausting work in the hinterlands. Uh, some of the things that uh, they've seen, especially the uh, especially the goblin tribes. I have to constantly be uh, on alert for those things. They they like to steal sheep, in fact. We've lost several. And uh, and I'll tell you something else. I'd, I'd heard it, it's as if the problems are getting closer uh, here uh, to Griff's Bluff from all the way out in the, uh, in the Wailing Hills. You know, that's the sort of thing that they would deal with. Strange things up there. Is, that's uh, that's what you don't we're say. Going with through, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes at night you can see red lights in the sky off in the distance. It's it's, it's bizarre. If they, it keeps going on, pilgrims will stop coming through here, and we'll be ble we'll be blood drive money. Without pilgrim traffic, Griff's Bluff won't survive. So I've uh, heard there are strange things beyond the mountains that way. Hi. Um, and you all could ask other questions, uh, or you, Ben, you could roll a d6 if you want a uh, different rumor. I'd like to know. I'll pan the camera back to you and Phil Dark in a, a minute. Uh, the, are you roll four? Four, yeah. Uh, it, they, they, yeah, the, the, they've said the strange things uh, if you go further up into the hills, but even here in the hinterlands. Uh, 
I don't know if I believe this. This sounds like a like a a, a whiner. Uh, it sounds like the tale of someone who's had too much to drink. But I have heard that uh, someone tell a story about skeletons and the dead rising in the night. But the the story isn't about uh, them attacking or lurking off in the dark. They say they're building things. It's absurd. Well, that sounds worse. <laughs> yeah, we're, what, what skeleton? <laughs> where are they building and where? Where are these crazy rumors coming from? Oh, uh, there's a lot of problems uh, out in the hinterlands. There's uh, there's villages out there. They, uh, there's you know, of course, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, there's Westernell uh, off on the border in the north, uh, near uh, um, near uh, uh, the border with Rebic. Uh, but uh, we've heard these things from shepherds coming in from Borstad. Where would Gors Gorstad be? Uh, Borst Borstad. Uh, Borstad is um, it's just uh, it's in some hills north of here before you get into the Wailing Hills. Just as the the flatlands start to, just as they start to to wane and, and, and turn into the, well, to the hills that make up the Wailing Hills. The uh, frame and foundation of these buildings must be excellent. You know, they're the, and he kind of leans in, he says it loud so that the barkeep can hear him. Yeah. It's the skeleton of the building. The uh, Feldark goes, ha ha! And he's, you, when you look over, he's like writing something down. <laughs> and it is like two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, I'll pan the. i towards the poor blade. Uh, uh, <laughs> I will pan the camera. Let's see. Skeleton. Of building. I'll pan the camera back to Feldark. What, <laughs> sorry, what were you saying, uh, Chris? Well, I made my charisma. What did you ask me to do? A charisma? Ah, yes. Uh, you made your oh, charisma yeah. save because you were telling him his ale was terrible. And that... Um, well, and that it could, Im could be improved. And yeah, it could be wouldn't, improved. Wouldn't he, wouldn't, wouldn't he like, you know... Um, you, um, you look... You look around the, the inn, and there's all these uh, landscape paintings. And I mentioned this before, but like the uh, the smell of apple pie is nice, although strange because you've seen no apple pie. Um, the jokes are terrible. The ale is mediocre, and the paintings are kind of like the ale. They're just like, meh, you know. Uh, but he keeps trying to sell uh, his paintings as well. Uh, and uh, he um, he slumps down on the bar and he says, "You're right, you're right. Oh, things just keep getting worse around here. We've got so many problems. I just don't know how we're gonna make it. Not hardly as many pilgrims make their way through Griff's Bluff as they used to. And I don't get all of the fine ingredients I once had." It all used to come from Rebic, and even some of the monasteries on the way of the Pilgrim's Path, but nothing comes that way anymore. Well, wouldn't it be nice if there was some kind of trade open again to the north? Trade to the north? You mean to the dwarves? That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But I'm I'm speaking of some place closer than that. Closer? There's no place closer than that. Uh, not to the north. Well, there might be. But if there was, would you be interested in investing in such an endeavor? Oh well, uh, of course I would. Uh, but. It wouldn't be possible anyways. The goblins, uh, they have the curfew here right now. Um, there's no way. Uh, I see. So it seems like goblins are... Are they the biggest problem? <sighs> well, uh, I've heard all sorts of strange 
You, you mentioned the North. In fact, I've heard all sorts of strange things. They say years ago that there was a, some sort of cataclysmic explosion at a, a Temple of the Thrice Blessed in the North. And since then, no one has gone up to the North. Um, on the other side of the mountains, I mean, uh, if that's what, you t what you're talking about. But just north of here in the hinterlands, there are goblins everywhere. Um, and uh, they even say that some of the goblins ride wolves into battle, hunt people down, eat them. Yes, yes, this is a problem. Well, my friend, we'll keep you in mind if any such thing were to open up, but I can put your name down as interested, yes, in such an endeavor. In other words, you'd be willing to... Would you... Now, now look at... Now, listen here. And I lean in close again. You, you feel like you can trust me, right? I seem... Uh, do, I, do I seem the trustworthy sort? Uh, yeah, do you seem... You seem a uh, kind enough sort. Uh, I, I, th I suppose so. I want to see your place thrive. You've welcomed us after a long, hard road, and it's, uh, it, we we won't forget it. it. May seem commonplace to you, but to us, this place is really uh, almost like a. It's a true respite. Wouldn't you agree? A respite, gentlemen. I say this place. <laughs> um. and uh and and so i uh uh so i in i in confidence i tell you i'm empowered to represent just such a place that may ha well have need and ability for trade and so if i it's such a if we were to get a trade deal going would you tell as a, as a as a major business owner here in this town this lovely town of griff's bluff would you be willing to lend your weight to that cause ah oh, yes i will you know i haven't spoken to the to the what's it called the uh the lord marshal the marcher lord in some time but uh uh, he knows that I'm here, and uh, he knows I run a reputable business, I think. And, uh, yes, I uh, trade partners from another city or another kingdom. Wait a second. You don't come from across the river to the east, do you? No, we don't. Why? You ask me to trust you. Show me the skin of your shoulder. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, it's, it's, yeah. He, he looks. He grabs your hand and looks at your. Uh, he looks at your uh, forearm. He's like, okay. So you don't come across that river. Or, south of here. No, no, no. Ah, Why? Good then. He slaps you on the shoulder. You must come from the west. Good. Yeah. I'd heard that they were all barbarians and murderers, but, you know, people do exaggerate. Uh, well, it's more than I know. But no, I don't come from there. I come from uh, just a, a, a place up north that is in need of trade and uh, eager to uh, to engage. So, now how does one get a, a an audience with the Lord Marshal, the Marcher Lord? Oh. You want to speak to the Marshal Lord? Well, I suppose one thing you could do is go up and knock on the door. <laughs> and he uh, he's, yes. He's like, uh, or uh, I suppose you could, um, let's see. Uh, yes, I, I, I suppose you could just try to gain an audience. I, I will warn you, though. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the Lord Marshal, he's... Um, uh, Baron Edric, he's a distracted man, and uh, no doubt full of many worries. It might be difficult to gain an audience with him. Well, we, my friends and I, 
We sort of specialize in taking care of people's worries for them. That perhaps he'll speak to us. All right, well, uh, the keep is hard to miss. Uh, if that's where you're going, um, you'll uh, you'll find it uh, just on the edge of town near the Moot Hall. Uh, and just from here, you just um, continue on the town circle until the the square widens uh, near the whale. You can't miss it. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you again for your hospitality. And I think I can say uh, that I'll certainly be... And well, I'll go ahead and uh, and give him a gold piece. Oh, well, thank you. That's awfully kind of you. Ah, a gold piece. The day's looking up. He smiles at his gold piece. Well, gentlemen. Shall we go see... What was his name? Baron something or other? Um, his name is... Uh, the uh, Baron Edric of Hillsbro. House Hillsbro. There's my notes. I also stopped by, uh, what, what was her name, Varnlin, Van, Van, Vanlin, the greatest thief. Yeah, master thief, yeah. Uh, and just out of curiosity, what are your rates? Well, it depends on the job. It depends on the payout of the job. If I think that the payout might be very low, then I'm going to charge some more. Uh, but usually about a hundred gold pieces for a job. And then a portion of whatever we earn, of course. A hundred plus a portion? My goodness. Well, right. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> she says, all right, and she keeps drinking her ale. All right. Good to know what rates to charge her if she needs any services of an actual master thief. <laughs> yeah. What's Ben right now? What level? Four. Wow. What's the level title for uh, for uh, level four question. thief? What is that? That's a good question. Thief. Fourth level thief. I didn't include it at the time I wrote that article, and then I didn't. Um, but it would have been fun to have like that actually codified. Yeah. So. Let's see, apprentice foot bad Robert Burglar. So, burglar. <laughs> it's not that you're I mean, burglary. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're Master better than thief. a foot pad and a <laughs> robber. You know, so it's still not even that uh, illustrious. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Master Thief, look at this. Oh, Master Thief is like level nine. Oh wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, assuming it's one per level, then Master Thief is nine or ten, I guess. Wow. So, okay, if she's that, then okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all terrified. <laughs> but then would never try it, never show it. It's like, Master B. I guess. Burglar, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do you all do? Well, we've got uh, two people to visit. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't actually hear. I, I missed... I heard you're getting directions, but you're you're getting directions to where? The uh, uh, Church of the Thrice Blessed, so that I can uh, talk to somebody about making Brandonsford a uh, pilgrimage site. Um, that should yes. uh, keep it safe from outside influence, for the most part. Okay, so you're concerned you don't want to tell too many people about Brandonsford? Uh... I mean, to rebuild the walls, you know, if it's not going to be done by dwarves, it's got to be done by a bunch of humans with, uh, with, with big carts and workmen and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah that's what, 
I was thinking if, if we were when we were talking about trade with humans, it was Griff's bluff or Revic. Revic will definitely take advantage. But here, if they were more religiously minded, if we could maybe convince them that there's some sort of you know holy site or it something. It honestly won't take range, much convincing. Or... We've got all the proof yeah. uh, that we need, really. Um, and I mean. I think. <laughs> if they're but, looking uh, for more trade for the pit for pilgrimages through Griff's Bluff, maybe if there could be a <laughs> some synergy there. You know, I don't. Well, absolutely. If if we get if we can get the religious folk on on our side, then they can be the ones to make the appeal uh, and say, you know, uh, and also uh, pledge some of the funds. Well, if you get two places on a pilgrimage, then you just have a whole pilgrimage route that hopefully would be... It sounds... You need to more, you know, yes. Then there's uh, people going in, and then with trade, there's stuff going out. It also sounds like our big problem is going to be making that road safe somewhat. Or I guess if there's going to be caravans... The idea is that they would be... they would ha We either have to help make them a lot safer... Mm -hmm. Or uh, those caravans are going to have to be very heavily guarded. We're creating jobs. <laughs> so yeah. what was so what was all that with the shoulder oh. and all of that? Like, because I mean, didn't we come from a other side of a river to the east? Or I don't know how we came. Like, from, you, we came from like far way far to the south. I think my understanding. Yeah, I think from here we've got to we've got to go east, right? And then east and and. No, it, it's it's mostly north from here and a little east to go to Brandonsford, if my tracking is correct. Actually, from here, it might be more due north, more direct north, I think, because yeah. we, we, we hit the road and then went east for a bit before we got to... Well, we did cross a river going west when we left Brandonsford. That's when we started. Well, yeah. That's what threw me off. It's like, but that, oh, wait, that's, we... not, that's not the same river, okay. I don't think. Or how is um, it not? Yeah. Because we crossed a river that was going east to west that would parallel the road, did it? Or, or am I imagining things? Or is that just the road? Uh, hang on, I'll, I'll no, anyway. post what I have got based off of your map and then what my... Yeah, sadly, green things. my map that I posted there doesn't include the bit that I added when we traveled south, but that really was just, like, pretty much a straight shot south from Black Oak, uh, and and then um, through the grasslands until we hit the road. Um, okay, I think I've got... The road is basically, like, just to the south of the map that I had already made, kind of. Like, if you add, like, a couple of grassland hexes... To, this is to the best of my, the best of my uh, estimation based on description. So um, while you all are kind of like talking, where you're gonna go and stuff like that, you uh, when you leave the lone watchman in, you see outside that there are um, uh, there are a couple of guards uh, that are further up the street from where you are. Um, this kind of forms a circle with the the. Um, there are kind of like two these two circles in town, and the Lone Watchman's on the south circle, so this is like the main road in town uh, that rejoins the Pilgrim's Road uh, at the east gate. And you can see further on towards where the east gate is, there are a couple guards in the distance. You can see some people working, and uh, they're carting chickens uh, for sale to the market. And then you see, um, you see uh, people... Uh, whispering, they're they're talking. Uh, they're they're obviously sharing some kind of like gossip with each other, like two women. And then Ben, what is the most valuable item you have on you? Ooh, I probably I got my cutlass. There's a jeweled cutlass that I. We'll look into the treasury. What's in the treasury that's the most yeah. valuable? Let's Don't see. you have some jewelry? Uh, trying to look over my notes, and I'm trying to keep remember which ones are. Steve, didn't we have some jewelry? Silver bagel or something. 
Yeah, we've got, um, let's see, golden amulet uh, with a note inside. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh! I vaguely remember that. I can't, I, I, yeah, anyways, go ahead. What else? Uh, big chalice. Okay. I was the chalice I had on here. I don't know if it's the same one. With the skull, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Right, we do have skull, uh, skull with ruby eyes, jewelry. It just says jewelry. Your, uh, your characters rope. don't know this, but that chalice is missing. Ah. Putting a big frown beside it. Hmm. Actually, I take that back. Uh, ben can roll a d6. You have to get a uh, a one or a two, I think. <sighs> or, or actually, what is your like hear noise like your? Oh, kinda... that's a one to three for my hear noise. Yeah. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll say that you do notice. Um, you notice a figure in cloak slinking off uh, down an alleyway uh, in the distance. I would definitely want to follow that figure in cloak. See, does it does it look like the cloak from uh, Vinland by any chance? Yes. Yeah, I assumed as much when she was eyeing us and I heard she was a master thief. It's like, and I thought maybe I'll pickpocket her. Then I realized master thief, if, if it's actually, that's her title, that's five levels above mine, which puts a big penalty on my pickpocketing. <laughs> All right, you, you do follow her. Uh, you come to a large bush uh, near uh, a one of the larger houses in town. You find that basically you would need to either trespass in the house's property to make it through, or you'll need to go all the way around. So, not clear which way she went? Uh, it looks like she went straight through this house's property. Then that's what I'm going to do. All right. Um, do you want to sneak, or do you want to just be like, get out of my way, I'm coming through your house? Oh, I, was, I'll be, I guess I'm going to try sneaking here. Okay, you could do a regular thief check uh, for, uh, what is it, uh... Uh, yeah. I know, that's like thieves. Move you silently. have lots of abilities and you're bad at all. He just started off. Huh. Yeah, he did. He, <laughs> he just started off. Gosh, I hope he doesn't get into trouble. <laughs> Move silently is 35. Oh, thief skills, man. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. You make it. Uh, so what it is, is this falls right next to the property. You're able to find just the place where you're able to almost like parkour into the brush itself. Uh, and uh, the brush merely just shimmies slightly, barely gaining the attention of a child in this estate uh, who points. And then her mother is like, stop, leave me alone. And uh, it gains no attention as you slink past like a ghost. Uh, you make it uh, on the other side, and the last thing you see, uh, there are two more houses. You see this cloaked figure uh, slinking up over the wall, the palisade um, of uh, Griff's Bluff. Climb that wall after. Okay, you can uh, do a climb sheer surface check. That's much better. That's only if I, I get well. I just jinxed it because I got a ninety to that. So what could go wrong? That, yeah, this is where I roll it's a 40 a foot wall. <laughs> but you can climb it. Let's do it. Uh, come on, come ah, on. Nice. Oh. All right, yeah, it's 40 foot wall. You like parkour up this thing, grab a thing, climb up to the top of it. And you can see her uh, trying to make it down the dusty side among the brush on the other side. She looks up astonished that you were able to keep up with her. And you're able to, <laughs> you're able to like <laughs> scurry down on the other side, and she just inconceivable. <laughs> you made told you, a master wonders. thief. <laughs> and she just breaks into a run. Uh, so this is the last check, and if you succeed, you'll be able to tackle her. Um, okay, what what check is this? <laughs> let's test your thief skills. Uh, Thirty. Uh, unless it wouldn't make any sense, but I love these like thief skills and you're winning so far and it's a lot of fun um i don't think so though i think this would just be a dexterity check dexterity yeah so dexterity okay, so attribute could... check you just roll under it d20 so I, I, my dexterity i believe is a 13 so i'm gonna double check make sure i got that it's been a while since i looked at my character sheet um yeah 13 let's see 
Oh, here, here, here's where I roll high, another 19. <laughs> nice. No. Three. Yes. You're, you're able to <laughs> tackle her to the ground and you find you with a loud oof uh, and it hurts your gut is some large object, uh, a metallic object under her cloak. Is uh, uh, rams into you as you as you pin her to the ground. Uh, as you remove the cloak, you see your skull chalice that she's stolen. Can I try and can I take my skull back or chalice back and try and pickpocket her as well? <laughs> I mean, uh, I yeah, you could just like pocket. take her bag of gold from her. Um, okay. True. Yeah, I just like it's like she pickpocketed me. I want to try out my pickpocket yeah. skills. Yeah, I'll her. say that you grab her bag of gold. It contains a um, fifty platinum pieces. Because I mean, this is a level nine thief. The payoff, yeah. man. That is a payoff yeah. for yeah. some good rolling. So you, do you just like grab it and then like wink at her and run away, or what? Yeah, it's like yeah, master thief. <laughs> yeah, you, you grab the bag. <laughs> And then she like gets up like a, like just uh, uh, like the most affronted she's ever been in her life, and she's like she's <laughs> waits for a second, and then she's like thief, and like, like and she yells out. She is fun. She just stole from me. And then you um, thief, thank you. <laughs> put her outside the wall, so you know you you, you run around the wall. Uh, your friends are not going to see you for a couple of couple of rounds here, but um, uh, yeah, you made off with like a bag of. You also have a. Uh, a rival now. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I was hoping we could hire her with our newfound windfall. Oh, I just got, what, 50 platinum? We <laughs> have some more money to hire her with. <laughs> I mean, that we can Oops. afford your fee, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. Or, or, or how much would this be enough to have you as a retainer? <laughs> with 50 platinum too. oh right. my goodness uh, meanwhile uh, what are what are you and um, uh, Tharnland, Knob, Squints and Helmer doing you'd been just darts uh, like he just darts off I suppose we uh... <laughs> shall we wait here for him or <laughs> Knob is just like I don't know. Uh, he just ran off. Yes. Um, well, we'll we'll uh, we'll 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 go uh, have one for the road. All right. You guys just turn around and go back in the tavern and have something to drink. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I hate to not be here, you know, when he gets back, if he wouldn't know where to find us, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, eventually you make it back, Ben, and you find your friends just in the tavern drinking, waiting on you. Uh, all right, well, I was like, well, we bad news is we were robbed. Good news is I'll hold up her pack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if and I don't know if we do we want to wait around and see if she comes back, or do we want to go back about our business? Let's go if she comes on about back, it. I'll give her her bag back. And no hard feelings, you know, oh. one, one to another. But I don't know if she's gonna be. Uh, yeah. You you wait <laughs> for some want, time, and she doesn't back. seem to return. Yep, yeah, that's about what I was afraid of. Uh, yeah, <laughs> watch your backs, guys. Yeah. Or I guess I watch my back for me, guys. <laughs> Not sure. Uh, yes. Well. Hey, so, let's let's move on this pilgrim's trail then. Yeah, you're gonna go to the church first. I think that's better. I'm gonna assume that they have some kind of pull with the locals or with the local authorities. Okay. Put a token down for you all. 
Um, no. Let's get rid of that for a second. Configure. Hmm. That sounds promising. Well, maybe get rid of this. Just, I'm having trouble figuring this out. Nope. Oh, well, this is basically simple enough um, so um, you leave out uh, east, the east gate um, and continue along the road uh, you see a, a very humble uh, but still a, a sizable um, church with steeple um, and uh, a couple of houses and uh, a farm and you smell two things uh, you smell the strong scent of apples, both fresh and fermented, and pig dung. And, uh, let's see. What do you do? Um, I'm gonna go in and, uh, into the, the church and see if I can find somebody, um, well, find somebody who I can ask about who I would talk to, or who we would talk to about um, um, a pilgrimage site. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> uh, you've probably been here at some point in your past, uh, because this is a significant site in its own right. Um, it is sort of inadvertently fallen into becoming the the head of the, the the seat of authority of the church um, because uh, Sister Greta uh, is essentially like the senior church official at this point um, after what happened with the, uh, the local uh, bishop of this place. So you go inside the church and you can see uh, some of the uh, attendants um, uh, the temple attendants. Uh, let me see if I've got some. Oh, the map is all black. Is it? Yeah. Huh. Thank you for letting me know. What about now? I can see the uh, um, the piece. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Light, Light effects. effects. Nice. Light effects. Okay. And then something like... Um, this okay so you go inside the church uh, you can see some of the church attendants they're speaking behind the altar near the sacristy um, and uh, all women um, and uh, then some people are in here praying uh, so you can either go toward the back like toward the we call the like an alcove that sits on either side of the altar, but not the sacristy. Like, the vestry. Yeah, like uh, yeah, sometimes you'd have like I'm thinking of like um, you know Western European churches where you have like this little alcove in the corner kind of deal. Um, usually for the uh, baptismal font. All right. Yeah, there um, there are some attendants back there speaking. Uh, so you could go back there, 
And then there is uh, the, the main worship area here where people are praying. Okay, I'll uh, quietly go towards the back. All right, what is everybody else doing? I'm going to follow him because he knows seems to know what he's doing. This, by the way, is the greeting of the, uh, the Thrice Blessed. I guess, meaning, okay. I guess meaning three. You know? So, I don't know. But, I uh, go pray with some people like and kind of eye the... Try and re get a get a good read on so any of the people praying and pick up on any, anything there. So All I'll right. go pr pray. Or pretend to, at least. Ordering three beers in German. Tharnlin uh, <laughs> speaks loudly because uh, he doesn't know how this works. And he's like, All right, then we're... Uh, so it's time to start talking about all the things that's bothering us, right? That's what we do uh, I'm, back in the... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? Ah. Oh. Place of, place of, of reference. Ah. Respect. Quiet, oh. quiet contemplation. Ah, strange. Ah, very well. Do the airing of grievances? Yeah, he, he sits <laughs> down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's about to. Uh, and then he, like, he, for him, this is a place where he should be loud. Uh, but he's like, uh, all right. And he sits down uncomfortably. The hobbits sit down in wonder, you know, as this place is like light pours in through stained glass in this kind of like ethereal way, uh, inviting you into this contemplative space. You know, the hobbits have only ever seen something, something like this with Brandon's house, but it was much smaller. Um, and uh, so they sit there quietly and everything. Um, meanwhile, you all go back to the back, uh, um, <clears throat> Edward and, uh, Helmer, uh, to the attendants, right? Uh, one of yeah. the attendants that's dressed like a nun, uh, turns and says, um, hello, uh, can we help you? Uh, yes, uh, we've recently made a very interesting discovery, uh, in regards to Sir Brandon. And I wish to uh, speak with somebody about a potential pilgrimage site. Um, would you be able to direct me to whom I would speak for this? <sighs> well, um, I'm afraid that that would be Sister Greta, and uh, Sister Greta is not here right now. Um, she's actually at the uh, at the keep, at the the Lord Baron's uh, keep. Lord Baron, uh, uh, Hillsborough? Yes, he, she is at Lord Hillsborough's uh, residence. Uh, some matter of urgency. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I think maybe you'd need to come again some other time. Now, meanwhile, I'm going to pan the camera back over to Ben and Tharnlin and Nob and Squints. You're sitting there and you're trying to listen. No one is saying anything. Uh, but then, a goblin comes in. Um... Hmm. And uh, the goblin waddles up and uh, sits down next to you, uh, sits down behind you all, and smiles. Well, I was gonna get ready and start whispering and to about the miracles that had occurred at Brandonsford, and, uh, and uh, praying out loud and quietly, but enough where people could hear me to think. Uh, the we thank the uh, powers that be because I don't know anything about this religion, uh, about the miracles that occurred at Brandonsford and the, you know, the way that power was revealed and for the light and all this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna talking out loud, dropping, hope it where clearly people who are praying can hear me, and then uh, see if I get any. And then, and then as I'm doing that, start like, wait, there's a goblin back here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. and then while you're doing that, first of all, you make people uncomfortable uh, in this quiet <laughs> sanctuary, you know, uh, but uh, talking out loud, you know, and everything. But then uh, people come around, two armed men with armor and blades uh, come around... Um, uh, the, you can see them on the outside uh, of the of the the church, and they come in and they enter, and uh, they stand near the nave and they wait, uh, and they watch the goblin. 
And then the goblin just looks back like... Well, what? What can I do for you? Can't, uh, can't come in and spend some time in, in prayer? He's, he's, the goblin just says that out loud. And then these men are watching. Steve, you're muted. Sorry. I say, right. He talks like people. Yeah, he does. <laughs> the people talk. Uh, does he come in here often? Oh, you say this to the uh, to the sisters? Okay, they yeah. say, uh, no, no, he does not. He does not come in here very often. Um, although, um, the goblins are protected here just as well as anyone else, but some of our, and they look back at the, the men, um, some of our um, knight militant initiates, um, and this is, this, by the way, is what you are, uh, Helmer. You're like a, you know, you're a martial religious type. Uh, they say uh, uh, some of them are a bit zealous, uh, considering what's happened. We've had thievery, disappearances, missing livestock. Um, of course, some of the hamlets have been razed, people have been murdered. And so, uh, I... I hope that no, I hope nothing bad happens here today. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Well, perhaps uh looks at Edward. Uh, perhaps we should rejoin our friend. Yes, I agree. As we're walking, it kind of leans in and says, uh, uh, "I regret being at uh, Baron's is most fortuitous, uh, though strange." Well, I certainly hope we don't pass her on the road. We should make all haste. Indeed. Um, as you all start to rejoin this goblin, after a, a moment of just smiling with self-satisfaction, hops up, waddles out to the door, and then pats the guy on his, uh, what do you call the, the armor that's on your hip? Uh, pats him right there. Grieve. And, yeah, the grieve, and is like... Pauldron, I don't know. Oh, Pauldron's the shoulder. Glad you're keeping us safe there, buddy. And then walks out. And they do look where, pissed off. Where is he from? I ask the guard. You, you all like go back to the door toward the sanctum to, to the entrance. It's time. It's time to go. We clearly have to go back to the keep. So, um, the uh, the guard is like <clears throat> that was Kitsack. Some of the goblins come into town to cause trouble. Uh, it's it's exhausting work between the guards that we set up for Rebic spies and for these goblins. Uh, we're beset on all sides by enemies. Uh, I yes. All them being permitted into the city. <clears throat> when last I was here, what has changed? The goblins, you mean? Yeah. It is part of our ancient laws. If someone comes, whether they truly mean it in their heart or not, if they claim that they are here as a pilgrim, we cannot deny them. But first sign of trouble, brother. You can tell that you're, you know, like a knight errant as well. The first sign of trouble, you need to be ready. Always. Uh, strange, this goblin speaks intelligently. Uh, the ones I've encountered recently with my companions uh, certainly have not. It's a rare thing. I suspect that uh, some of the goblin tribal leaders, the warlords, they, they send them in here as spies under the guise of being pilgrims. Indeed. But we follow our ways, regardless. This is the correct thing to do. Uh, gentlemen, it was a pleasure. Uh, we must must be off. He makes the makes the, the sign and Yeah. Is it like this? It's like a like a gun? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of, of uh 
Yeah, it's like more Order curved. Of, uh, uh, sweet BS piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take three. <laughs> three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do that as well. Uh, and then they stand uh, near the entrance and talk to each other and kind of fuss about these goblins and how everything is. Uh, and they, they start to lean in and whisper something like kind of more um, surreptitious to each other uh, as you start to leave. Helmut <laughs> leans in. I think that goblin is going to meet a bad end. Well, can we see not our how the goblin went? Uh, it looks like the goblin continues on the road to the east, which is the pilgrim road. Onwards to the fortress. All right. Um. You uh, travel back to the fortress. Let me see if I have this up. What in the world? Okay. Oh, maybe. Huh. Um, I might be able to. Let's see here if this works. Lighting should be... Let's see. Just make sure that you can see... vision on. That's why you couldn't see before. And then like that. You uh, approach the keep. Um, the, the keep looks like um, uh, it's a, uh, a large castle. On the north end of the town, um, there are uh, among the battlements of this castle. I say large castle, but it's a big, it's a castle. Uh, 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 to the left and right of the battlements are large um, uh, stone towers that form the the, the foundations of it, uh, and a uh, a watch house on its its upper level on the left side. Um, there's a uh, what do you call a a bailey, like a portcullis and, and an area here that separates you from the main grounds. Uh, and then um, you can see on the other side of the, the portcullis that there is a um, open grounds and that there are uh, there are some people here talking out in front of the grounds. It looks as if they're waiting for an audience. The two guards here, they stop you as you approach and they say, uh, uh, by now it's probably early evening. They say, uh, good afternoon, uh, citizens and travelers, uh, uh, to, uh, the, uh, the keep of, um, of Hillsborough. They do not open the portcullis. Greetings and a fine evening. Aye. Yes. I suppose it is. And then, by the way, it's muddy here. You've noticed since you've got this point in the road that this whole place has just been muddy everywhere. Um, and it's also cold outside. But it's a clear sky. My good man, we desire an audience with the Baron. An audience with the Baron? Ha <laughs> Well, uh, and uh, who might you be? I... We are aldermen from the Shire of Brandonsford. They both laugh. <laughs> and they laugh for a while. This is I'm going to uh, I'm going to maintain the most serious <laughs> face serious the whole time that I can possibly laugh. can. They just keep <laughs> laughing. You've got your 
silly Hobbit outfits on, but they're not too silly, but they're like, also, hold on now. It's not like you're a high class or something, you know? And then, um, and then well, it is you, fancy. It is fancy. You do. And you have two hobbits with you and a dwarf. Uh, so, uh, they're like, <laughs> an element of the Hobbit Shire, a, fan, a fancy Hobbit Shire door. Uh, <laughs> and eventually they stop laughing and they're like, ah, oh, thank you, sir. That was a good laugh. Hey, you shouldn't hang around, though. We have laws about loitering. We are aldermen from the Shire of Brandonsburg, slayers of the dragon. At this, they laugh even louder. <laughs> Dragon Slayer <laughs> and Hobbit Masters. Uh, Tharlan, a representative of the Dwarves of the North, for trade. <laughs> and this makes him laugh even more. Like, <laughs> like this would be like if you did this in real life. If you're like, I, you know. I'm an elderman of the Hobbit Shire, and I slew the dragon, and we have the, the representative of the dwarves with us. <laughs> My good man, and at this I, I don't know I don't know what I'm attempting exactly, but uh, to communicate my complete seriousness is what I'm attempting. Uh, I bear the sword of Brandon himself. With it, I slew the dragon of Brandonsford. And we are indeed the aldermen from Brandonsford, empowered to negotiate on her behalf. I ask that you tell your lord as much. Uh, one of them points to them, and, and he's like, he says, um, he says, Edwa, now hold on, I... I've heard of these people. I've heard of them. I heard a rumor about these people. And then uh, the person called Edwa is like, Idalgo. <laughs> these these people are they're they're fools. It's a jest. And and he's like, No, 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 Idal Edwa. I I know I. And he, and he turns and he's like, I am so happy to meet you. And he reaches out to shake your hand. I take it. I, I I've heard Irma. about I've heard about you. You, uh, you're you're part of the acting troupe that came in from out of town. You're yesterday's muse. It's it's extraordinary. Uh, now I I think that just goes a little too far what you say about things like you know the the nights not actually being real or what happened here in the past being fake or whatever and that sort of stuff. But uh, I. But the acting, the other shows you did, I've heard good things, and I'd like to see your shows. <laughs> I turn to my companions at a loss. <laughs> the, the church is going to be really disappointed in these guys when they find out about all the the, the new new pilgrimages and uh, blessings that have been going to be passing over this place if. Uh, we don't get that audience. <laughs> I agree. No. Uh, the, the one called uh, Hidalgo says, "I, I agree." I, how how do I get to, how do I get admission to see your show? What show? What show are you talking about, <laughs> my good man? About, uh, the, uh, you're part of the acting troupe that's visiting uh, Griff's Griff's Vale, correct? If uh, you were to get us an, uh, you know, pass a message on for an audience, maybe we could see about getting you some tickets. Oh well, you know, I don't, I don't know about uh, that. <laughs> that uh, mm -hmm, you know. Um, let's see here. That's an interesting idea. Um. Uh, Idwa. Ed turns to Hidalgo and and whispers and uh, and your bonus for charisma is what? Plus one. Plus one. Okay. Mine's plus one as well. Same. Okay. Um. All right. Um. And uh, he said he he whispers something. He says, I, "Would you be willing to just wait here for a few more moments? The changing of the guard is about to happen." If it must be. Uh, all right. A few moments pass, and the guard changes, uh, and then he, and the one that says Idwa, he says, 
I'm off duty soon. Give me just a moment. I'll be right back. And then he leaves. And then after a few minutes, he comes back. Um, and uh, he, he motions you off to, to the side of the keep. Off. This is kind of like a ditch. Um, where's the map? Kind of like... Uh, kind of off here. Um, and he motions you over there and he says, Now, now listen. Old Sergeant Pris Fourfingers is, uh, uh, she's, <clears throat> how do I put this? She'll have me killed if I find out about this, or if she finds out about this. But, uh, I, we have a saying around here that Fourfingers doesn't need to know everything that happens, you know. Otherwise, we'd have no fun at all. Okay. That's, a, that's a pithy saying. I think so. At this point, uh, uh, he'll, he'll, uh, he, he'll, he'll, he becomes a little uncomfortable, kind of sees what's going on here, and kind of goes, I, I, um, I have to just be over, over, over there. <laughs> it's just going uh, to cover his ears his and everything's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, and he says, uh, uh, so uh, this is, the, this is the, the bottom, this is what it is. If you'd like, we don't have any money, uh, but we could show you around the hall on a couple of conditions. Uh, at night, if you could, uh, if you could come at night, I could get you in through the sally gate on the north end of the keep. Uh, we'll need to get you something so that you don't mess yourself, uh, your, your costumes and stuff up when you bring it in. Uh, but the lads and I would love a show. If you could do a show for the lads and I in the watch house, we'll keep the sergeant from finding out, and then we'll give you a tour of the, ho of the hall. That's what? the only way that I'll get an audience. That's the only way that I'll get to see your show. What? what? That's where you're a Viking. This is, this is your... I, uh, <laughs> I, I unsling my loot. I mean, to, out of, out of character, uh, I'm going to block the loot thing. It's not going to work. <laughs> you can't do the, wait, no, wait, we talked about this, uh, but I don't think, let me bring it up. I don't think, well, go ahead. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what are you going to do with the loot? <laughs> Where's it at? Uh, well, um, you see a goblin throw a rock. <laughs> <laughs> is the, the the masterpiece your magnum opus really um um I was going to say is out of character <laughs> you're, you're thinking like what am I going to do with this loot out of character uh, you all are nobody uh, and like you're going to roll up on the white house um but, well, we're not. No, we, we aren't. We're not nobody. We are who we say we are. They oh, just don't I, know us. I know that. <laughs> and and uh, uh, well, hmm. perhaps it's best that we uh, wait for. His sister Greta elsewhere. Perhaps, perhaps, could, uh... perhaps so. Oh, you're going to wait for sister Greta to like depart? I guess it just seems like a waste. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, the thief in me is like, well, he's offered to show us his secret entrance to sneak through but that could probably be this bad idea in the long not, that's not what we want we don't want to like we're, yeah. we're we just want to do that, that but I can't help but want to know where it is yes that's all. Um, no. uh, we, we we're here on uh, on our own uh, merits <laughs> so so I, I'd, I'd hate to earn uh, a bad name before we have a chance to uh, to make a good name or to prove that we uh, we have one. Um, you can hear the. So I, I assume that you. 
Well, actually, no. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna charm this guy. I'll just. Uh, I'll just. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say. You know what? I'll, I'll put on a. I'll put on a special preview for you. Uh, it, come, come to the. Uh, what the heck's the name of that place? With the swill. Oh, uh, the uh, um, Lone Watchman Inn. I'll, I'll put on a, a, a preview for you, a, a, a special uh, one-night-only engagement at the uh, the Watchman. Oh, oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. I'll tell the lads about this. Uh, when we get off duty, we'll, we'll meet you there. Oh, thank yes. you. You're very kind. Yes, yes. Now listen, they're going to come... Exp uh, I'll, I'll wait for him to... Uh, I'll walk... I'll turn away um, haughtily and, uh, and, and say they're going to they're gonna come... Ex someone's going to come, at least this guy, going to come expecting a show. And so I'll sing about our deeds and, uh, and, uh, and, and perhaps uh, news will spread that way and we have to be patient, I suppose. But yes, we also should wait for Sister Greta. Yeah, you, singing your songs are probably going to spread rumors much better than my bad prayer attempts. So, <laughs> well, I'm doing think, my part. Uh, every little bit helps. Got a Absolutely. Bar for a reason, right? Absolutely. Well, <laughs> and we've got a. <laughs> we, no offense, Ben. We've got a weird-looking little creature for a reason as well. <laughs> it's, mem it's, it's memorable. This guy came in, sat down next to me, and strange-looking kind of guy, and started talking about strange things. People will remember. Good point. I'm trying to find um, something happens when you guys uh, up, uh, approach. Uh, where he's like, I um, I have no questions. <laughs> You're safe. Don't worry. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. A couple of things happen. Uh, so you you have this exchange, and then eventually, um, there's a trumpet blown and the gates are opened. And several people exit the main gate into this keep. Um, and uh, some guards come and they, they kind of tell you, like, get off the road, get out of the way, you know. And uh, these seem to be important people. Uh, and they're they're uh, in a carriage. And uh, these guards, they guard this carriage uh, as, it, uh, as it exits. Well, it's perhaps best yeah. that we... Uh return to the church tomorrow uh, to, to speak to Sister Greta. Um, I'm uneasy. I'm impatient. <laughs> um, after some time as you're discussing this, so this... this, this I mean, I, I, I want to ask, is that Sister Greta? I ask one of the guards. Oh, uh, they say... No, no, that's not, uh, that, that's the delegation from Countess Yestra and Rebek. I see. They, uh, they sent another appeal to the, to the marcher lord to, that, uh, his kingdom here should be a part of Rebek's territory. You can imagine yeah. how well that's going to go. I hope not too well. Uh, I agree. Well. I say... Griff's veil or die. That's if you ask me. Uh, now I'll do whatever my lord asks of me, but uh, I've lived here all my life, and why it, uh, it was the marcher lord himself that uh, marched into battle with the dwarves against the traitors in the War of the Traitor, and we don't need some, uh, some ridiculous crime lord far out to the east that has nothing to do with protecting the pilgrims or our orchards or our hamlets here in, in the hinterlands. We don't need Rebek meddling in our affairs, especially with these goblins. I I couldn't agree more, my friend. That's just why we're here, in fact. Omer, uh, as he's saying that, he does the he pounds on his shield. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I 
So, is Sister Rebic still within? A uh, sister, uh, what's her name? Sister uh, Greta. Greta, still within then? Oh, yeah. And then after a few moments with you all kind of like hanging around here, it seems like you've gained the guard's favor. He wants to talk to you, so he thinks you're this like famous acting troupe. Um, and uh, eventually they he they blow the trumpet again, and only three figures leave. Uh, a uh, a woman. Um, uh, that's fairly plainly dressed, um, but with, um, I, well, I guess you would say just a habit. And then, uh, uh, two armed, uh, uh, armored men, uh, to either side of her. And they just walk right out the gate and they start to depart. Sister Rebic, assist, why do I keep doing that? Sister Greta? Yeah, Sister Greta, um. Uh, <clears throat> she says, uh, yes, I'm Sister Greta. I, I nod towards, uh, towards you, uh, Helmer. All right, he makes the, uh, makes the sign. And, uh, he says, uh, I wish, if, if possible, uh, to have uh, some words with you, uh, sister. She makes the sign as well. Uh, what are we going with? Let's see, it's this, uh, the three. <laughs> No, no, the no other, this beer. way. Not that one, Ross. Anything but that. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> gotcha. You know, I don't know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> this one, right? That's the one, sort of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she does that. Uh, I'm not, that looks kind of dumb. I think it's going to have to be down here. We'll work on it. <laughs> I was thinking it like super casual. Like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Uh, and, uh, okay, sorry, go ahead. Helmer, what do uh, you. I, I wait for her response, like if she's willing to listen. Oh, she's, she says, Oh, uh, uh, bless you. Uh, uh, you're one of our, um, our, mili our knights, our knights militant. It's good to see it's you. And she smiles at you. You as well, sister. Um, I have an uh, interesting thing to relate. Um, I've recently gone on pilgrimage to the Dragon Shrine, um, where I met uh, these two fine gentlemen, um, uh, Rat by Ben and uh, Sir Edward. Um, I Greetings, across... my friends. And she does the sign. And start as flashing well. that sign. Right you start flashing the sign too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, this is what it is. They're doing that now. I, I sort of awkwardly now. hold up the sign and like accidentally start making the sign of the cross, and then like stop myself. Right? Yeah, because uh, you're from Albion. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. Yes. But you were in the middle of. Yeah. I, well, Helmer, you were you were saying that. She I says, "Ah, oh, so you like you that. travel to the Broken Dragon Shrine." She points to the east, away from Brandonsford. Uh, yes. Um, however, uh, coming to a small town of uh, called Brandonsford, um, named oh, after. Ah, I've heard of it. The hobbits live there. Lovely. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, these these uh, fine gentlemen over here are um, uh, from from this place. Oh, it's very nice to meet you. You know, uh, you may not know this, but. Um, uh, and she's talking to Nob. Uh, in in times past, one of our uh, men of great renown once uh, helped your village. I, I don't know if that's something still kept by your people, but it's something very precious to us. And Nob says, uh, "Yes, uh, my lady. Yeah, I, I. It's something important to us as well, and we remember it well." Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's that's uh, that's that's helpful. Um, well. As I came into this uh, humble town of hobbits, I found, and he kind of leans in because this is this this does sound crazy. The guards intervene, like and they they're like like, like he, he, no, you know, he, he's like like yeah, the yeah. kind of gestures to them too. He's like, I found the body of a slain dragon, and I know this sounds mad. Uh, Sir Edward here, um, rat by then, and these these hobbits partook in the slaying of a dragon and. The way they did it was with the sword of St. Brandon himself. Uh, uh, that's quite the tell, um, young man. Truly. <laughs> it's madness. 
<laughs> it does it's sound true. like madness to me. Uh, uh, well, uh, perhaps, um, perhaps sometime uh, you might uh, take a trip to the Lone Watchman Inn to share your tales, because I'm sure they'd be glad to hear it there. Ma sure. Madam, madam, would you know the sword of Sir Brandon if you saw it? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> no one has seen the sword of Sir Brandon and... Uh, I suppose, uh, depending on the story, it could have been a th 800 years, uh, unless some stories of Brandon's Fred are true, and then it could have been several centuries, but it's not something that has been seen by anyone. But would you know it? Not so fast. Do you think you would know it? <laughs> you claim to have a sword from one of our greatest saints, one of the... The people that I do. delivered the evening lands. Yes, from... I bear it. I bear it on my person even now. Um, not geography. What is the name? Uh, ah, the Dragon Wrath. Yes. Uh, back when Griff came here and they defeated the dragons themselves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and she turns to her knights and she's like... It, it, if it would be okay, just allow the young lad to, to show it. And and then motions toward Helmer, assuming that Helmer is the one that has it. I will take the scabbard off my... Like, so as not to just be drawing the sword, I will take the scabbard off my belt and present it to her to examine. She um, takes it expertly and draws the blade and then looks at it down the... and holds it, and she's like... This is an incredibly fine blade. Uh, the knights there, they look and wonder at it because it's it's very it's very good. It's a it's a good blade, uh, and uh, um, she's like, well, this is either a counterfeit, or you found uh, something special. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, you could come tomorrow to the to the church. Uh, where did you say that you found this? We didn't say, madam, but it happens to have been in the tomb of Sir Brandon. Tomb robbers? Nay, lady. Men who had a mission to slay a dragon. <laughs> a dragon? Ah! This, yeah, this young hobbit found us at the at the broken dragon shrine is that what it's called the dragon shrine yeah it was the broken or I, th I think the broken dragon shrine is a ways up but we, they had found the uh you guys had found the mound of uh a, a mound where Sir Brandon well no was. but I mean when we we originally the point, the, came from this dragon shrine the right? point is this right. yes okay. this young hobbit here is a believer a believer like few I've ever met in my life. And he believed so strongly that he came to the Broken Dragon Shrine begging for the help of Sir Brandon because the town of Brandonsford would die without it. For our own reasons, we happened to be traveling. We came upon him at that time. He took us back to Brandonsford where he told us about the dragon and about the goblins, and about all the problems that we subsequently helped them solve. But now they have new problems, and we need to help them solve those problems as well. And so we come here begging for your aid, lady, so that the poor town of Brandonsford is not left entirely defenseless and, and at the mercy of, of, uh, of their surroundings, of the dangers that you know so well. She uh, looks down to Nob and she says, "You traveled for three days across across the hinterlands to to visit the Broken Dragon Shrine to petition Saint Brandon and others for help. Uh, you risked your life for this." And and Nob is like, "I did." And she says, "Is it true? How is Brandonsford these days?" And uh, he says. Not well. We, the wall that was built by the hands of, of Brandon and, and the dwarves of those times by 
by once when the when the dwarves had a, a kingdom uh, here they uh, the beast it tore down the wall and we're defenseless now uh, our hobbits can't defend against the goblins that have encamped all around the woods to the north uh, and trade has stopped we'll probably starve in the winter this will be the end of Brandonsford and the Shrine of Brandon. Um, and she looks at Nob and she says, "Oh, sorry, go ahead." I was, I was just gonna, ma'am. You may, you may, you may, see, may be able to tell I'm not a man of faith like our, our good knight errant here, or is the wielder of the sword of Sir Brandon. I'm just sim- simple sewer tosher, used to mucking around in the muck doing what I have to to get by. But this this hobbit, he he needed, some, when he needed, his faith called for, for something to be done. Somehow, I found myself pulled into it, and I saw things like you wouldn't believe, like the Shrine of Sir Brandon itself. When we needed, when his people needed it, when he believed in Sir Brandon enough, his sword was granted. And there was a dragon slain. I, I know that sounds crazy, but I, I was there and I did my best to stab into that thing as well, but that blade killed it. Tharnland says, Aye, it's true. I'm from Karnbular. I'm Tharnland. <coughs> and, uh, uh, <coughs> and I saw it myself. And, uh, my people don't lie. And we don't forget. And um, she looks at the at Nob and says, uh, "I'm very sorry to hear about about Brandonsford. And if nothing else, I would like to hear the tale of that place. For when I was younger, I saw it, and I loved it very much. Uh, would you all uh, meet me uh, uh, at my house?" Uh, near the church tomorrow. Without a doubt. Very well. I'll see you then. Thrice blessed. Bless, protect, and keep you. Grass mother, shadow child, and all father all. Does that. I'll I'll do the thing. (laughs) I don't know if we're going to stick with this, but I guess that's where we're at right now. Um, Ratbite will be sticking with that for everybody he meets. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? But like, I, well, he, t- is, this is intentionally wrong, right? It's not correct. I mean, <laughs> hands are hard to draw. Like, you could hold that up. You could just quickly just do that. It would look like basically it's like a beard maybe stroke, just like, like that or something. Uh, I, I guess that just hold it up. We won't do a gang sign thing. That's it's too much. I can't deal with it. All it is is a beard stroke. You just pull your hand away mid stroke, and that's that's what it is. Okay. Now I'm thinking of the claw from uh, Liar Liar. The claw. <laughs> the claw. <laughs> <laughs> I do that with my daughter now. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Okay. She loves it. So. So being that it's on evening, well, I'll, first of all, I'll, I'll make the symbol and you know, bow low and uh, and and nod politely to the to her guards as well, and generally make a you know as good a show of it as as can be. All right, uh, yeah, and they um, uh, they nod to you and bow and make the sign as well, and they they depart. Um, where do you all go? You're currently at the north part of town near the manor, um, near the uh, keep. Let's, we, we promised, well, I promised, so I, I, I better go, I better go sing a song or two. I gotta I, I tell the, the, uh, the barkeep that his, his moment has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> if I can make this work, I cannot, okay. I need some time to fix this stuff. Okay, so yeah, you make it back to the uh, the Lone Watchman Inn uh, for the evening. Uh, do you pay uh, another gold piece for food uh, for the, the night and the next morning and 
to stay for the evening? I already paid mine. All right. Um, and uh, actually, uh, Steve, I don't know if you can also subtract three gold since you have three, two hobbits and a dwarf as well uh, from the group pool. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. And uh, actually, I suppose who is here? Let me see who's here. Keeping an eye out for Vinland. Right. <laughs> Back against the wall. Away from the window. Um, uh, <laughs> Sleeping one eye open tonight. Yeah, Ben, roll a d6. Oh. Uh, the, 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 this is the... The three. Um, okay, yeah, you, um... You, you do see her. Um... And she escapes out the back. She just slinks off into the dark and escapes. <laughs> she I was, was like, I, I got your stuff. Okay, all right then. I guess yeah. I guess keeping it another day. Is that like the thieves' version? Got your nose. <laughs> you see um, uh, the the guards here, and they they raise their their tankards and cheer as you enter. Um, and uh, you also see uh, a couple of commoners that have taken the, you know, they're, they're enjoying an evening free from work uh, at, at the local inn. And then the other person that you see is the same old man who is like shaking, uh, looking down at his cup uh, with a mad, nervous expression. And you saw this man the first night that you came here. <laughs> is he a Bosmer? And then there's Feldark, you see. <laughs> All right, well, it's time to start singing. I'll right. pick a... The, 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 where, wherever the thickest amount of people is. I, I guess there's not... So there's not many people, or is there, there's just a few other people and... and uh... Yeah, there's just a, a few other people here. Um, just... Okay. All right. So... Um, this affects the number of subjects up to 6 HD of creatures. That's 2 HD per level of the bard. And so we're just going to do save versus, they have to save versus spell fascinated. What's your goal? Like, what are you? And I'm going to start, well, the, oh, the goal is to give everybody an absolutely wonderful impression of all of us. Ah, okay. And tell a story, the tell, and also tell the story of, uh, of uh, Sir Brandon and uh, and uh, and we're, and we're going to throw in uh, we're, we are going to throw in see a goblin throw a rock absolutely <laughs> uh, absolutely tell our exploits to get this pilgrimage yeah, yeah. going I mean it, it's yeah. and the thing is we're not going to I don't want to claim about us I want to talk about just the hero of Brand you know this the, mm -hmm. like the the sword, the sword of Brandon returning to save, you know, his his, you know, his town and, uh, um, uh, you know, slaying the dragon, you know, whatever. Make it metaphorical. Yeah. Okay. You, make it uh, make it multi layered and metaphorical. A rock opera about the, right. uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, twenty one twelve or something. You you put on this performance. Um... And it's so good uh, that you've had enough practice as well uh, with this um, that it draws people in from the outside who start dancing and clapping, and it draws a crowd. And uh, the guards just love it. Um, yeah. You even earn some yeah. money. I'll say that you earn uh, 2d6 uh, gold pieces worth of... Uh, it'll be in silver, though, so... I and you can roll for 2d6. Well, that's 80 silver. 80 silver. You earn 80 silver pennies worth of uh, worth of money from this okay. uh, this performance. I'm gonna I'm gonna immediately fold that all of that silver back into rounds for everybody. Oh man, they they love it. Um, and uh, Idoa, uh, the the guard, he comes up to you. Um, after your performance, or between performances, if you perform late into the evening, and he says, 
Uh, now, if you change your mind, you just let me know if you want to get a tour of the, the keep. Um, there's strange noises in there, too, but that's part of the attraction, right? But if you change your mind, you let me know, and I'll, the boys and I will get you in. Okay, I, I've, I've changed my mind, but I tell you what, I have my, uh, my friend here, he's and my compatriot, he's the guy who hears all of that kind of news, okay? And so you just tell him everything there is to know about that. And I'll just be over here. <laughs> what? Who? My friend Ben here. He's ah. he's uh, he's he's our uh, our acrobat. Uh, yes. So yeah. if you he likes to know that that's the kind of thing he when he puts on a show he likes to know what what his tools are you know and what what's available. Yeah. Tell wow. me all about it, and we'll we'll figure out. Maybe we'll have to figure out another time. Maybe we're a little booked up, but just. Give me the rundown, the, describe the place. And during the uh, the whole evening, uh, Helmer has has two things that he's trying to do. One is he gets the uh, the barkeeper to start telling jokes because everybody is in such a good mood and like half in their <laughs> half in their cups. Yeah. So he gets him to do that, and then he goes around and he starts slinging these paintings. But have you seen this this beautiful artwork? And he's like drunk. a little, Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, he is too. Have you seen this? This is fine, fine work. The, the artist uh, speaks so much words through these paintings. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, so two things happen. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Make a charisma check, charisma attribute check. Ah, uh, come on, come on. Where's my d20? There it is. Hi, hi, hi. No, 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 no. Where are you? Taking a bit. I'm going to press it again. There it is. Oh, just made it. <laughs> oh, you made it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two things happen. The first thing that happens is uh, <clears throat> you, some drunks are lured over to, to Feldark, and, and he says the... I think it's the same one you heard on the way in. He's like, So did you hear the one about how they say that you make holy water? You burn the hell out of it! <laughs> and he slaps them on the shoulder and stuff. And they're so drunk, they actually, they do, they like it. And then you're leading these drunks around. They start buying paintings from, from Feldark. So, uh, all of that said, uh, you all gain plus one reputation. Um, with, um, and I'm going to say that this is Griff's Bluff. So the whole town. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and you put on this a, a good old um, hoopla uh, for everybody at the at the Lone Watchman <laughs> Inn. And um, we definitely got to get Knob and Squints to do a dance on one of the tables at some point. Sure. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. it happens. Yeah, they they put on a song themselves and they dance right. and they entertain everybody, and um, everybody gets just right drunk and they buy out a bunch of uh, Feldark's uh, paintings. Now, probably the biggest thing is uh, Feldark has not been this well off in a long time. He, in fact, does so well that um, when you take a break at your table, he brings by drinks and he says, you have done me a great favor, gentlemen, and I want to tell you that this is on the house tonight. So you all can take all your gold back. Uh, Steve, you can take your four gold back and you can take the gold, you two can take your gold back. And he says, uh, he says, not only that, I don't have a lot of this left, but this is the good stuff. And he puts drinks on the table. And they have this sweet apple scent. Oh, fantastic! It's a hurry. Oh, my friend, my, my friend, tell me about the apples. Do they come from here? They they they, they grow down by the uh, <clears throat> the priory or or something. Um. Oh yes, uh, the, the apples they uh, they're grown just next to the church. Uh, uh, the church grows them, in fact. It's one of the main businesses that we sell to the pilgrims here, but... Uh, well, the apples haven't grown as much this season. And uh, so the apple cider that we'd had, that we grew here ourselves, I have very little of it left. Um, well, that's a true shame. Now, what's... Is there any 
idea of what's behind the the dearth? The the dearth? Yes. The lack of apples. Oh, oh, the dearth of apples. Ah, uh, yeah. He he says, well, uh, I can only guess, but uh, I know that. Uh, I'd heard that Sister Greta has been worrying herself to death about it. Um, the church depends on it, you know. And uh, well, if you ask me, it has to have been them goblins. I mean... Yes. Well, you, you know, you're probably correct in some way. Well, good. We'll have something that we can... Or maybe we'll have something... She maybe needs something from us. Well, um, you all perform the night, gain the favor of, of the whole town and, uh, uh, and the Lone Watchman Inn and Feldark, uh, who is very fond of you now, and, and the guards at uh, the keep of Lord Hillsborough. Uh, and you have an audience tomorrow with, uh, at the church with uh, Sister Greta. So, and with that, I think that's where we'll end the session for the night.